Welcome in the Energy Technic Lab at the University of Applied Sciences, Ravensburg Weingarten. Here we install the laser Doppler anemometer system and if you are beginning to work with this system, this short tutorial video will give you some practical advice for starting the measurements. However, studying the literature is also required. There are some basic safety instructions you should follow. First, the door has to be locked and tagged out as you have seen. Cover the measurement area with the curtain. And while working in the measurement area, uh, when the laser is running you should always wear the safety glasses. Also uh, you should read the detailed safety regulations. The LDA is a non-intrusive optical measurement method, which is an absolute measurement method, so calibration is not needed, says the brochure. In reality the calibration of the system is very hard work and requires patience. First, you have to ensure the absolute parallelity of the laser beam with the optical bench. Adjust the two big thumb screws in the front of the transmitter box, the one in the rear side, and adjust the four thumb screws on each manipulator in order to have the four laser beams coming out from the probe with maximum intensity. The electronic part of the system consists of two counter processors, a frequency shifter with two channels, and an oscilloscope for monitoring the Doppler signal in the counter processors. The IXA is the traversing system controller, which is controlled from left view. You can move the probe in big steps. or by precision movement with the smallest step of 1 mm. The signal noise ratio depends on the laser power, the photomultiplier voltage and the amount of seeding particles. This is a signal with a relatively poor seeding. See what happens if I add more smoke into the pipe. To find out the range of the Doppler frequency, calculation like the one in the fifth chapter of this thesis should be done. To do this, you need an approximate knowledge about the flow velocity. Then you can set the frequency shifter. Now we know the approximate frequency, so we can filter out the high and the low frequency noises by adjusting the high cutoff and the low cutoff frequency. To have the signals in LabVIEW, connect the BNC cable in the analog output of the blue counter processor and connect it to the zero analog input of the DACU board. Do the same with the green counter processor on the first analog input. You also need to apply the frequency shift settings in the LabVIEW program. Now you can have the frequency information from the counter processor and the calculated velocity information in the chart. If you think that the frequency calculation should be done in another way, you can just modify this velocity calculation sub VI here. And uh, if you would turn the optic traversing system, you can modify its uh, stepper motor control sub VI by changing the wiring of these buttons and also changing the signs in these constants here. And if you would need smaller steps than 1 mm, you can reduce it here until 25 microns. I hope this short video was useful, but reading the thesis and the non-tech manuals will give you much more help. I wish you good luck and patience for this work.